Let's talk about the other game, Logan. Niners-Lions. What is a big key that stands out to you for this one? Uh, first of all, I want to toot my own horn and flex my muscle real quick. Toot it. Uh, I did predict both of these title games coming into the playoffs. I am very hype. Uh, because of that, I'm going to stick to my original predictions for both of these games. I also predicted uh, them Detroit Lions to get to the NFC title game uh, preseason. I'm so pumped. Talk your uh, I, shit. I'm so pumped about the Lions being here. This is a battle of the offensive titans, and that's the thing that I am mm -hmm. looking forward to the most with this game is I think talent-wise, I think both of these teams match up really well on paper. They are strong in the trenches. Uh, they have yep. got playmakers on offense. And defensively, obviously, I give the Niners the edge. I, I honestly don't think it's as close. Uh, Trench-wise, I would give the Lions very close. Mm -hmm. Linebacking-wise, I think it's slightly close. close really they're, I, they're okay the niners take the edge and then secondary yeah, wise the, the niners take the lines edge are too. okay lines lines are yeah. solid shout out jack campbell but you know shout Fred out, yeah, shout out alex anzalone yeah. different <laughs> it is it is different and so that's a big difference to me but the reason that the lions can hang is because of that man ben johnson and how they just it's awesome mm -hmm. I am so jealous of the Lions scheming and how they call game plans and how they just set everything up. It's it's a tenant of sports. You want to do something, so you make them bite on the fake. Oh, I need to get to the right side of the basket. I'm going to fake left because it's going to open up the right side. They're going to bite. Oh, I need to throw. Uh, I need to open up this drag route. Uh, I need to open up the passing game. We're going to run the ball. It's all about setting up. It's it's like fishing, man. It's setting the hook and getting that fish to bite and reeling them in and suckering them in. And there have been no two better coordinators uh, this season uh, than, in my opinion, Shanahan and Ben Johnson, dialing up key plays and setting up the offensive game plan so that you have these things to rely on late in games. Mm -hmm. uh, the one play that I will point to from the Buccaneers game is at third and short. Everybody and their mama thought that Jared Goff was going to hand that ball right up the middle between the tackles to David Montgomery. In third string tight end, Brock Wright slips out, blocks for three seconds, slips out on that drag route. It's right yeah. there wide open. It's going to be who schemes better, in my opinion. Who can draw up the better offensive game plan? These teams are so close in talent and caliber. And again, I give the edge to the Niners and talent-wise, but with Debo Samuel uh, potentially out, that's the battle that I am looking for. Who can out-scheme the other coordinator? And, I, again, I don't think there's a better two in football. Maybe. Maybe you could go Andy Reid. Maybe, but I think Mahomes is a big component of that. When you're talking about Jared Goff and Brock Purdy being elevated to these levels, I think Shanahan and I think Ben Johnson are the two best in football. That's the matchup that I'm looking forward to the most, man, is the chess match, the mind games, the offensive game plan from these two teams, man. Uh, there's been no two better teams in football at it this year, in my opinion. So Debo is actually back in practice. Okay, that's so huge. Presume that he will play. I think you're right, though. Coaching is uh, a big factor in this game in a way mm -hmm. that in most you probably wouldn't look at it as like a top key just because mm -hmm. these are two coaches who really, really elevate their offenses. Of course, they have really good talent to work with in the skill positions and in the trenches, but they elevate their quarterbacks. They're very creative. And we saw Kyle Shanahan, who I think is a great, great offensive coach, kind of force the Niners to come back last week, partly because of his decision-making, his clock management, mm -hmm. his play calling early. So I do think that that matters. The biggest key to me is whether or not the Detroit Lions can disrupt what the Niners want to do offensively and specifically disrupt Brock Purdy. Mm -hmm. They do two things very well on defense, and they are both totally about that front. They get pressure, and they stop the run. And the Niners obviously want to run the football a lot, and Brock Purdy under pressure, things can get a little bit dicey. Overall, though, I think this defense is still outmatched by just a loaded Niners offense. Over their last 11 games, more than half the season for the Lions, they are allowing 25 points per game, 379 yards per game. And I'm scared for the secondary because the Niners hit on explosive plays, dude. Ayuk <laughs> will get open downfield in a flash. George Kittle will make those dudes miss, and he will get you 20 extra yards after the catch. And maybe 
This is a game where Aiden Hutchinson breaks through, has a strip sack, or they're able to get enough pressure to where Brock forces one ball that he shouldn't. It could be a one turnover Brock game. Mm -hmm. It's probably not a three turnover rattled Brock game. And I think even if you do get a big play on him defensively, he's going to give you a few big plays back because of the weakness of that secondary. And the conditions are a lot better than last week. It's going to be mm -hmm. nice weather in San Francisco, and we've seen that Brock struggles a bit in the rain with ball security. And overall, he would look, just looked uncomfortable last week in the pocket. He was missing throws. Cleveland game, bad conditions. Mm -hmm. He really struggled. But at the end of the day, to beat the Niners, you have to disrupt Brock Purdy. You have to expose him as an imperfect quarterback, as a guy who, when things are humming for this offense – can play near perfect football, which he has this year. In their wins, he is 28 touchdowns to two picks. This was through the regular season, over 10 yards per attempt. In their losses, three touchdowns to nine picks, less efficient, less total yardage. So if you're going to beat them, that's just how you have to do it. And ultimately, I think this Lions defense has been shoddy enough to where I don't believe that they're going to do that. I don't believe they're going to do it either. I want to be clear about that. But I think Aaron Glenn has the scheme and the personnel to dial up plays that disrupt Purdy. The specific plays I'm talking about, I was astounded at Aaron Glenn's ability uh, to dial up defensive back blitzes mm -hmm. on Baker Mayfield all game long. And that's what I'm talking about with... We can get into these overarching details. The, the things that change games on the play-to-play -play basis are adjustments and disguising stuff. In a basketball mm -hmm. game... Even as something as little as this, is switching two players because you like a matchup, because you think mm -hmm. this guy defends better and this guy is going to crash the boards. In a football game, you line up the same way all game long, except this time instead of the cornerback dropping into a hook flat, to a hook zone, you know, whatever it is, he blitzes. Mm -hmm. Baker, there were four or five different plays were, and Baker handled the pressure immensely well. He got the ball out fast. He took the licks when he needed to because that's the danger of defensive back blitzes is when you don't see him coming off of the edge, you don't see him pre-snap, so it's a blind spot for you. He's not an edge, guys. So you're not going, I need to be ready. I need to be ready for him. You're not even looking at him. The danger of those is when he can poke a ball loose and force a turnover when you never mm -hmm. see him coming. Baker dealt with that really well. Baker's also very experienced. Something that I think that is getting lost in the shuffle here is that Baker's just played a lot of football. Yeah. Baker's gotten better over the past. He was already a good quarterback when he came to the league. I've always thought. I know a lot of people haven't. Baker's improved. Mm -hmm. Brock is a young guy. And I'm not knocking Brock. I think Brock is very composed. I think Brock really reads the field well. I know that we've knocked yeah. on Brock a lot. There are things that Brock does exceptionally well. Yeah. But if Aaron Glenn can dial up a few of those timely defensive back blitzes, again, not every play, but a few, I think that's enough where it could swing the game. I'm not going to predict it, but I know Aaron Glenn has that in his bag, and I think that is an X factor for this Detroit Lions defense. Yeah, I can see that, and I thought that he did a very good job as well. And by the way, well, I guess this isn't going to happen anymore because there's only two head coaching jobs left. It's not impossible. Aaron Glenn is a bit of a hot head coaching candidate. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if the Lions lost both coordinators? Then we'll really see what Dan Campbell's made of. That's tough. Yeah. Look at how it changed public opinion of Nick Sirianni. But I do think that could be a factor. At the same time, I it's worry. It's overwhelming, man. I, I worry about the Niners being ready for that. I worry about the Niners having counters, being able to get some real explosive plays. And just broadly on Brock Purdy, I want to say, because you mentioned him being young. I've seen a lot of outrage about Brock Purdy criticism and a lot of people just saying like, hey man, he's Mr. Irrelevant. It's incredible that he's here. That to me is a given. He's by far the best Mr. Yeah, so Irrelevant what? We that should we've hold ever him, seen. We should hold him to a different standard than other QBs? Exactly. Or he's a second year quarterback. He's a damn good second year quarterback. <laughs> yeah. For Mr. Irrelevant, he is unprecedentedly good. He is being held to the standard of the quarterback of the NFC favorite of the quarterback of arguably the best offense in football this year, of a guy who put up MVP caliber numbers. To me, I think there's been a middle ground with Brock all year, uh, but it's just clear that it's like you can't treat him like a kid with training mm. wheels when he is playing on such a great team, putting up such great numbers, and some people are elevating him to the MVP elite top five quarterback standard. 
See, that's what you don't understand, Carson. Because he was the last pick in the draft, we should only compare him to, like, Chandler Harnish and Chad yeah. Kelly. Yeah, he's Other a lot Mr. better than those guys. No, he's a lot better than those guys, Logan. There's no doubt about that. And at the end of the day, I do think this is a matchup where an off day from either of these quarterbacks could swing things. These are two of the more polar volatile quarterbacks <laughs> in the NFL this season. I mentioned the insane difference in splits between Brock Purdy mm -hmm. in his wins and in his losses. Good Jared Goff, Jared God, we'll call him, versus Jared, Jared Goof, Goof has also been quite the up and down experience, in particularly just mm -hmm. with taking care of the football. In five losses, he has 10 turnovers. In 14 wins, he has six turnovers. He can literally go from being one of the best in the NFL at protecting the football, like he was throughout last year and through the first half of this year and has been over the last couple weeks, to one of the most turnover-prone quarterbacks in the NFL. So who do you trust more just overall in this matchup at the quarterback position? I do trust Brock Purdy more. And okay. I can't shake the Jared Goof element, the bozo yeah. gene, the the dark cloud that looms with Jared Goof. Now, I, mm -hmm. I am rooting for the Detroit Lions. Uh, I'm rooting for my buddy Angelo finally seeing his team get to the promised land. The Lions yeah. have been long and suffering. That's where my dog is in the fight. But that's the one element is that I just can't shake that I always feel like there is a turnover looming. Even against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you could have felt that way about Baker Mayfield. And you know what? He delivered. But I wasn't scared about Baker in the final drive. I probably should have been. Yeah. I was scared about Jared tossing one. I was waiting. Mm -hmm. And he had a couple. He had a pair in the end zone. I mm -hmm. believe uh, Jamel Dean dropped two picks uh, that Jared Goff threw right to him. Not to mention, Jared Goff had that other play where he he's under duress and he tosses it out to the tight end where he panics. I can't shake that, man. But it's also... Like a, Think about how many balls Brock put in harm's way last week. Because that's that was a fair. Lot. <laughs> that's very fair. It's the final component that it comes down for me is something that you mentioned a lot throughout the year with Jared, and that's the fact that he's not exceptionally mobile. And that's where I draw mm -hmm. the line between the two guys. Is I think you're right. I can say that there's always one looming with Jared Goff. You can say that there's always one looming with Brock Purdy. You can have that feeling. So when both of the quarterbacks leave me with knots in my stomach, where I feel yeah. like the the bad turnover play is always coming. What it comes down to is qualities and traits. Well, Brock Purdy, and Jared does this too. Brock throws with great anticipation. Brock reads the hell out of the field. I trust Brock to diagnose coverage and to throw with anticipation. He processes the game exceptionally well. He's also just more mobile than Jared Goff, and that matters yeah. to me. When Jared is, Jared doesn't move a ton. He is, he's rocked. He is right there in the pocket. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. And that's where I draw the line. And so it's very marginal between these two quarterbacks. I always feel like they are prone to one bad play that feels like it's coming. I trust Brock Purdy just a little more. Uh, yeah. What about you, though? Are you rocking with, with Jared God, or are you expecting Jared Goof? It's so close, dude. It is. It's so close. And legitimately, betting on either of these quarterbacks <laughs> does scare the shit out of me. But betting against them, it's also like, you know, they're liable to have a great game. In any given week. I think Purdy does have the advantage in terms of mobility. And I think that when things are totally on schedule, he's been a bit more accurate overall this year. Although last week was scary. He was just off yeah. last week. Goff's advantage is the raw arm talent. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that he can make some throws that Brock can't. But I think as close as they may be, when you consider the situation the truly special weapons that Brock is playing with. And that's not to diminish what they have in Detroit, mm -hmm. but as we've talked about a level of four studs on one offense that we've maybe never seen before. When you consider that context, I would expect Brock to probably put forth the better numbers in this game. I think it's probably a little bit less likely that he has that back-breaking mistake than Jared in this game when you also consider the defenses that they're facing. So really, it is coming down to situational factors. Because yeah, exactly. One-on-one, -on -one, man, I think these dudes are in the same tier as quarterbacks. And uh, one of them can absolutely blow this game. But going into it, I don't view that as like the decisive factor. I view it as the Niners are the better football team. And that's why I think the Niners are going to win this game. They're the better defense. 
as overall offenses, they're comparable because they're great in the trenches. They have great play calling. They have really good run games. But I think that the separator is the Niners' all-time skill position talent there. So I'm going Niners 31-24 to in this game. I do think the Lions are going to put up points. I, I could see them scoring more than that. What's your prediction? I think the Lions are going to put up points, too. And while we're mentioning the great skill position talent of San Francisco, I do want to give a shout-out to the guys that have blossomed in Detroit. Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta, mm-hmm. Gibbs, Montgomery, uh, Jameson Williams. I mean, the Lions also have a laundry list of performers with a great offensive line. That's why I think this game is going to be very close. Uh, I am picking the 49ers to win 27-25. to 25. I think this is wow. a nail-biter. Wow. Does Brock have to lead a big nuts drive? No, I think it's going to be in golf's court. I think the Niners and, and, going to control. And he throws a pick. And I'm not going to pick. No, I'm not going to. Maybe. I, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love Jared Goff. I really do. A, went to the same high school as one of my best friends. B, went to Cal. C, all around really cool dude. Investor in Friday beers. I love the Almost Dude. Friday podcast. Went on the TMG podcast with Cody Cohen, Noel Miller, my favorite podcast. All around, very likable guy. Did the hilarious skit where he was undercover with whatever yeah. college team that was. Yeah, he's Road, awesome. Rides, rides home with his dad after a playoff game. He's awesome, dude. I love Jared Goff. He just had that hilarious press conference bit where the dude was like. Uh, something about you guys have a lot of good players and jared said thank you and then the guy was like but maybe not considered superstars like the niners guy and then he said all right i take it back i love jared goff (laughs) but god he has had a lot of back-breaking moments in Mm -hmm. his career so i think he's the best he's been but i don't think it's enough to overcome a better all-around football team (laughs) 